All right, we're still working through some example problems dealing with the product rule. And here's our first one, y equals x plus 3 times x squared plus x, and we're told to find y primed. So y primed is going to be the first, which is x plus 3 times the derivative of the second, which is 2x plus 1, plus the second, that's x squared plus x, times the derivative of the first, which is just 1. Now this will simplify a bit, and when it will simplify nicely, you should do that. So let's do the FOIL right here, and we get a 2x squared, and then our outer terms give us a plus x and a plus 6x, so that's a plus 7x plus 3 plus x squared plus x, and that works out to 3x squared plus 8x plus 3. Another example, y equals x squared plus 2 squared times 2x cubed plus 3x cubed. So y primed, the derivative is going to be the first, that's x squared plus 2 squared times the derivative of the second. And the derivative of that is going to involve the chain rule. So we'll say 3 times 2x cubed plus 3x squared and then times the derivative of the inner function, which will be 6x squared plus 3. So what I just wrote was the first times the derivative of the second, and now I need to do plus the second times the derivative of the first. And I'll come down here so I'll have enough room. So plus the second is 2x cubed plus 3x cubed times the derivative of the first here. And that will involve the chain rule again. So times 2 times x squared plus 2 to the power of 1 times the derivative of the inner function, which is 2x. And now you might see that we could factor this a bit. We could factor out an x plus 2 from each of our two terms, and we could factor out uh, 2x cubed plus 3x squared from each of the two terms. So you might factor it and simplify it some, but I'm just going to leave it like that. The factoring and simplifying is more of an algebra exercise. We're going to stay focused on the calculus here, although at times it, it is very appropriate to factor and simplify. But let's go on to the next example y equals the square root of x times the sine of x. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, y primed is going to be the first times the derivative of the second, and the derivative of the sine function is the cosine function, plus the second, sine x, times the derivative of the first. And when I see the square root, I think of that as x to the one-half, and so I take the derivative with the power rule. So that would be one-half times x to the negative one-half. So that's your answer. However, since our original equation was given in radical form, not exponent form, I'm going to turn my answer into radical form as well. This term is already in radical form, so that's fine. So I'll just write y primed equals the square root of x times the cosine of x plus, and this second term would have sine x in the numerator and 2 square root of x in the denominator. Here's another one. y is sine cubed x times x cubed plus sine x, and we want to find the derivative. So the derivative will be the first, that's sine cubed x, times the derivative of the second, which is 3x squared plus cosine x. We just do the, the, the derivative of that term by term plus the second, which is this whole thing now, x cubed plus sine x, times the derivative of the first. And this first here is sine x cubed. So I'll, I apply the power rule, and I get 3 times sine x squared, and then I multiply by the derivative of the inner function. The inner function was sine x, so the derivative of that is cosine x, and I'm done. Okay, take a look at this one. This next example is pretty interesting. y is equal to the cubed root of x squared plus 3x times x squared plus 3x squared. Okay, when you see this, clearly it's a product. 
So you might think, okay, product rule. So let's do this. This is the first. That's the cube root of x squared plus 3x times the derivative of the second, which is going to be the power rule applied to the second one. And then the chain rule tells us we have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So this will be times 2x plus 3. Okay, that's half of it. That was the first times the derivative of the second. Now we do plus the second times the derivative of the first. And I'll come down here on the next line. So the second is x squared plus 3x squared times the derivative of the first. And I'll think of the first function as this thing to the power of one-third. So the derivative of that is going to be one-third times this, x squared plus 3x. And we reduce the exponent by one, and that gives me a negative two-thirds. And then times the derivative of the inner function. So times 2x plus 3. And then you could try to simplify that a bit. And you might need to. If this were an AP exam question, and uh, the, a problem of this size would, likely to be, would be likely to be a multiple choice question. And if you're given several answers, none of them would probably be this. It would probably be in simplified form, so you would want to try to simplify this. But I'm not going to simplify this. Instead, I'm going to show you a much easier and faster way to solve this problem. Because if you're taking the AP exam, speed matters. And if you can find an easier and faster way to do it, especially one that involves less steps, then that's less opportunities to make a mistake. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this equation, and I recognize, look at this, x squared plus 3x in there. And that's x squared plus 3x. If I think of this in exponential form, this is x squared plus 3x to the 1 third times x squared plus 3x squared. And you remember from, um, from algebra class, if you have a to the power of 2 times a to the power of 5, well, multiplying two exponents together with the same base, this is just a to the power of 7 you add the exponents. We can apply that concept right here. I have this thing to the power of one-third times this thing to the power of two. So I can simply add the exponents. My function y, this is not y primed now, this is y, can just be written like this. x squared plus 3x to the power of two and a third, which I'll write as seven-thirds. And then we can simply take the derivative with the power rule and the chain rule. So y primed is going to be 7 thirds times x squared plus 3x to the power of 7 thirds minus 1, which is 4 thirds. And then the chain rule says to multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So that would be 2x plus 3. And that's a lot faster than working through all of this. And also, it gives you your result in a much much simpler form. Presumably, if we did this without making any mistakes, presumably this could be shown to be algebraically equal to the answer we got down here. And if you're taking the AP exam, the the and it's a multiple choice question, your answers are, are much more likely to be in, in a form, a simplified form, something like this, than they are like that. So if you have an option, take the easier approach. And this easier approach in this case came from recognizing that both of these can be thought of as exponents with the same base. Okay, here's one more. And a problem similar to this appeared on an AP exam several years ago. The function is x times the square root of 2x minus 3, and we're told to find the derivative. So we'll just apply the product rule. And so we have the first times the derivative of the second, which is going to be 1 half times 2x minus 3 to the negative 1 half. Just think of the square root there as being an exponent of 1 half. So that's the first times the derivative of the second. And then when we do the derivative of the second, we need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function according to the chain rule. And then we do plus the second, which is the square root of 2x minus 3 times the derivative of the first, which is just 1. 
So let's rewrite this. Our first term here, these twos cancel out, and we're left with x over the square root of 2x minus 3 plus the square root of 2x minus 3. And I'm going to rewrite that like this x over the square root of 2x minus 3 plus 2x minus 3 over the square root of 2x minus 3. You can see this is 2x minus 3 to the power of 1 and 2x minus 3 to the power of 1 half and dividing those gives me this 2x minus 3 to the power of 1 half. And so this works out to 3x minus 3 over the square root of 2x minus 3. And so you can see that your answer there is A. And being able to get an answer and then manipulate it into a different algebraic form is important because you want it to match one of the given answers of your multiple choice questions.